expert on this computer. Okay. okay. Now it should it has already started the recording. Okay. So uh, now we can start whenever you want, and you yes. have to accept the participants. Yes. Mm. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Hello, girls. Oh, hello. Hello, Marilena. I'm sorry for the voice. Um, so, oh. good morning, everyone. Let's wait a couple, a couple more minutes. minutes. Yes. Okay. Sure. Ana Maria, mm -hmm. Marlena is going to do the introduction, okay? All right. Okay, if uh, there, are... there aren't any more people waiting. Uh, uh, Marilena, no, as I can see, we don't have any other people. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, so, 
Good morning, everyone, again. Um, we welcome to the fifth and last session of the Online Youth Academy for Social Impact held by ITML for the DEC project. Um, so as every week, we have a different trainer. Today, we have uh, one of our team members, Ana Maria. So uh, for me, um, just, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Feel free to unmute yourselves and raise your hands and you know, <laughs> be uh, more interactive. So Ana Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marilena. Uh, let me first uh, share my screen. Uh, please let me know if you're seeing my screen in the PowerPoint. Yeah, we see, we see the, the presentation only. Only the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Marilena. I'm just pressing also, I, I can see some people joining, but we can start if you, if you are okay. Um, all right, so hello everyone, also from my side, and welcome to this uh, training session, Ethics and Empathy, Help and Wellbeing. Uh, before we proceed to the agenda, let me introduce uh, to you also myself. As Marilena mentioned, um, I'm Ana Maria Naxagoru. I'm Greek Cypriot, currently living in Greece. And uh, about my background, uh, I have studied computer science in um, Leicester of, uh, in United Kingdom. And then I proceed with the um, Master with Business Administration uh, in Cyprus. And for now, I'm in the first year of the Master of Positive um, Psychology. Uh, regarding my experience background, I'm working, I have around 10 years experience in uh, corporate business and I'm close enough to business uh, consultancy and coordination uh, along with some um, research uh, responsibilities. Uh, for now, for the last two years, I'm working in ITML as a project manager. Uh, all right, let's... Uh, proceed. Before, before starting our meeting, uh, as also Marilena mentioned, I would like to, uh, I tried my best to make this two-hour session much interesting as I can for you guys, uh, because it's the, it's the theme. I mean, it's ethics, empathy, and uh, health and well-being. So please feel free to share your thoughts. I made this session um, more in interactive, and we're going to have some activity some activity time, we're gonna have some open discussion. So uh, there's no wrong uh, answer here. So please feel free, it's morning. I hope you joined your coffee already. And um, if there are more questions, uh, please feel free to jump in uh, during the, the presentation. So just a minute, I have to move something here. No, I will move it here. All right. Uh, so for our agenda today, we have started already with an introduction of our participants and um, uh, introduction of myself. Uh, first uh, part, it's going to be ethics, ethics fundamental, uh, with the ethics also definition in business and workspace, which is really interesting uh, nowadays. Part B is going to be uh, empathy and uh, empathy fundamental uh, 
with uh, along with the online empathy and virtual empathy in other words uh then we're gonna have um like a 20 minute 10, 20 to 30 minutes um online exercise and open discussion uh then uh, we're gonna have um five to ten minutes break uh, according to our uh, remaining time that uh, we have uh part c it's gonna be the last uh, the last part which is health and well-being uh, we're going to see how health and well-being is presented in terms and then how uh, digital health and uh, wellness it's uh, presenting also in, in our uh, current uh, literature review. Then we're going to have a small, a small um, activity time along with open discussion. And then it's going to be the wrap up and the end of this beautiful training. All right, let's see. It. So starting uh, right now with uh, part A and ethics, um, here it's some, uh, what we're gonna see in our uh, today training uh, as ethics and empathy training concerns um, online ethical uh, behavior and interaction with, um, with others, with others based uh, on the skills such as the ability to recognize and understand the feelings that perspectives of others. Uh, what about you? But uh, what do you think about ethics? I mean, when we all hear about uh, ethics, we have many words coming to our head. Um, does anyone want to share something or it's just too early to unmute yourself? I don't know if I, I, I can see the, the participant window, but Marilena, I think you're also in, in the class, right? Well, I'm here. Okay, okay. Yes. I can check the chat, there is nothing, but... Okay. You're the only one who can see if there are any participants in the waiting room. Ah, uh, yes, let me check first, but... No, it's okay. Okay, but because I don't know, uh, anyone can, uh, can unmute uh, itself, right? Or do I have to press something? No, no, no. Because I am in the, present, in the presenter view and I cannot see much. Yes, yes. no. If okay. wants to no worries. Details, it's fine. They can do it on their own. Okay. Don't... All right. Uh, okay, well, I will proceed. Um, for myself, when I'm thinking about ethics, uh, I, I have on my mind something like honesty and um, principles, something like that, which I'm saying again that it's not, we don't have any wrong and answers here. So let's see. So uh, around uh, word ethics, uh, we have some um, words and some meanings that anyone uh, could have in their mind. This could be honor, choices, uh, conscience, responsibilities, uh, principles, as I already mentioned, etc. <clears throat> so uh, we all know that we encourage to make in our life uh, ethical choices uh, which are applying in ethics in all areas of our life. I mean, we are trying uh, in our everyday life to be uh, ethical enough to uh, our work, to our um, uh, workspace, university, uh, and, and also in our personal uh, relationships. So let's see in general some ethics definition here. Uh, ethics, it's a code of moral standards of uh, conduct for what is good and right as opposed to what is bad or wrong. Uh, I, we, have, we can see also that ethics uh, is based on well-founded standards of right and wrong, what uh, prescribe what humans ought to do, uh, usually in terms of uh, rights, obligations, benefits to society, as we already mentioned, fairness or specific um, uh, virtues. Uh, we can see also, and some in this is what we have, what we can see in our current uh, literature 
review. So that I tried to find some uh, and post it here. Uh, we can see also ethics uh, is presented as a branch of philosophy which uh, seeks to address um, questions about morality. Uh, that is about concepts like good and bad, um, right and wrong, virtue, etc. Uh, we can see that um, along with ethics, uh, it comes a ethical behavior, uh, which is right or good in the context of governing a moral code. Ethical behavior is, uh, va is value driven. And let's check if we have unknown words. Uh, what do we mean by moral? Uh, moral is uh, a lesson that can be uh, derived from a story or experience uh, for, for an individual. Uh, are the standards of uh, behavior, principles of right uh, and wrong. Uh, morals are the habits um, or the behaviors in respect to what an individual uh, believes right or wrong, as we already said. Uh, see here some images refers to ethics. There are plenty enough in our internet. Uh, ethics refers to a set of principles of right conduct, uh, and you need it's where you need to decide what is wrong and what is uh, good, uh, what is evil and not. Um, however, we can see we can see that we can present that ethic as a set of rules. Uh, and principles designed to encourage ethical conduct among a group of professionals. Uh, proceeding now we, with the ethics uh, definition in business, um, which comes that online ethics refers to, uh, I mean, as we can see, in, we, we already see the ethics uh, definition uh, in general. Uh, we're going to see a perspective now uh, how ethics definition is applying in uh, business. Uh, and here's a, a nice um, a sentence that I found during my research that some years ago, the, sociolo the sociologist uh, uh, Baumgart asked business people, what does ethics uh, mean to you? Which is the same question I already uh, did to you guys uh, before. Uh, and we can see some interesting uh, replies here where Ethics has to do with what my feelings tell me uh, is right or wrong. Uh, we can see some answers like being ethical is doing what the law requires, something different. Uh, ethics consists of the standards of behavior uh, our society accepts. And also another um, answer here, which is definitely okay. I mean, if we, if we have this one, I don't know what the word means, what exactly this word means, because I, we know what ethics means in general, but we don't know exactly the definition. So proceeding with the uh, ethics uh, definition in business, uh, we can see that also here we have um, a plethora in the internet that has introduced many new dimensions to the study and practice of ethics. So uh, online ethics refers to patterns of uh, behavior used when on the internet guided both by law and personal philosophy. Uh, the great capabilities of this communication medium allows for the potential of great harm, uh, cruelty, and even crime. Um, major, sorry, excuse me one minute, I have to admit some persons. All right. Uh, major concerns in the field on uh, online ethics. These include some, uh, we I'm sure that we have all this in mind. I mean, we have, concerns that is uh, about the protection of private information. What about that? How ethical can be uh, the use that, um, I mean, the time that we are spending in social media, how ethical is that? And how ethical is that we are posting something on Instagram or we are posting something on TikTok, which we, which we show in which we show our home and our daily routine. Uh, also, the limits of uh, presumed freedom of expression and the, the issues of uh, label, label, which is, stands with the uh, misrepresentation. Uh, understanding le uh, legal uh, ramifications and trusting personal philosophy of others 
uh, used in other areas of life can help a person, can help an individual uh, to determine uh, his or her uh, online ethics. Another uh, sentence is here about uh, ethics in business. What about understanding uh, ethics in a business? And what uh, something that we didn't mention before, I didn't mention before, is that ethics as a term uh, has been derived from the Greek uh, word ethos, as I can see from our participants. We have a lot of uh, Greek people here. So as I was saying, it's like, um, uh, ethics as a term has uh, derived from uh, Greek word ethos, which means character or morals. And uh, as we can see here in our uh, slide, it is a section of information or understanding that deals with the moral code of conduct or principle governing our activities. Uh, but when it comes to business ethics, um, it necessarily means fo to follow all the rules and standards set by a company or an organization that we are working in. Once familiar, it's called uh, of conduct will lead us to understanding um, of established morals on which the company uh, works. Um, also, it was interesting that I have found some, um, some videos in, uh, in YouTube, which is, um, more interesting, I mean, instead of reading much theory, um, I will try to play that video. I hope that it will, it, you will have a sound, but let me check if I have to make some, let me check. We have share sound, all right. Uh, if you don't hear anything, please interrupt me so I can. It's good. A discussion of the work ethic brings up some very provocative questions. Do workplace ethics problems come from a lack of a work ethic? Where does your character fit into your work ethic? What is happening in our modern global work environment that conflicts with our traditional view of the work ethic? How can we instill a good work ethic in those entering the workforce or those already in it? Of course, everyone has something to say on the topic. Everyone has a story to tell. In discussing the work ethic, there are many issues in play including cultural issues, generational issues, parenting, self-discipline, character, and many others. You need to understand that the work ethic, personal character, and ethical behavior at work are interconnected and are key factors in our professional ethical life. Why does the word morality leave most of us with an unsettled feeling? The fact is, whether we have high moral standards or not, most of us don't want to feel that someone else's morality is being pushed on us. It's simple human nature. We prefer to make our own moral decisions. But in reality, whether we know it or not, or like it or not, someone else's morality is constantly influencing our everyday decisions. In order to have any kind of meaningful dialogue on ethics, a discussion of morality must take place. One can argue that there is no such thing as ethics without morality. We need to be comfortable discussing morality in a variety of contexts and standing up for it when the time is right. Learning to make moral judgments is a significant step toward making compliance to rules an internal part of our character. The workplace is a unique setting to talk about moral decision making because some areas of the workplace are highly regulated by rules, yet others are not. We need to think about how this practically works out and how to develop skills to address the wide variety of circumstances we face each day. So that is, I hope you enjoy it. It was a video about ethics in uh, workspace. Uh, proceeding right away, uh, there is another video, which it's real fact. I mean, we can see that individuals and professionals are trying to, they are keep posting business video in social media, also in TikTok. Uh, so this is a nice example because 
he questioned his uh, himself about some daily um, issues that we have and how uh, I mean we can see how uh, he's responding. Let's see if you're an ethical person. So we're going to look at five different ethics-based situations, and you just have to think about what you do in each of them. So here we go. So would you return the shopping cart? Yes, always, and this isn't even a question. I don't get people who refuse to do so. The key to a functioning society is people putting away that cart. Only 58% return, all right. Would you cheat on a test? Yeah, I mean, this might be unpopular, but I don't think cheating on a test is bad, especially when they put so much weight on grades, like, just do what you have to do, who cares? 95% of people agree, I didn't think it'd be that high. Do you recycle? Yeah, I mean, I don't get the inconvenience of that. Only 32%, okay, probably because of China and India, is drunk driving ever justified? No. You should never be driving over 0.08, or texting for that matter, so definitely don't do that. 46% of people have done it. Okay, let's get that number down. Would you return extra change? So this depends. If it's a corporation with, like, big pockets, then no. But if it's, like, a local mom and pop shop, then I'd probably give it back. 40% return. All right, what do you guys think? <laughs> and... I have another another video, I think, from TikTok. Yes, that's right. Which is um, a professor. I think it's she's a doctor, and she's uh, saying something about what ethics matter in um, in her workspace. In her workspace, yes. Ethics matter in the workforce. People stay for leaders who they believe have their back and do the right thing behind closed doors. A CEO I worked with once. Uh, we forgot to give a woman who was on military leave equity grants. And I said, well, let's just catch up and we'll give it to her the next time we do it and we'll give her more. And he stopped me dead in my tracks and said, absolutely not. We will give her some equity out of my personal grant. I said, she would never even know that we were giving the grant. And he left me with this important lesson. Our actions are important even when nobody is looking. And great leaders do the right thing, even behind closed doors. He said, it's what a person does in private and not just public that makes them a great leader. So how do you lead? What kind of leader are you behind closed doors? All right. I think that is the last slide of uh, ethics. Um, does anyone want to share something or does anyone want to ask? Or if we don't have any someone that wants to speak, uh, we'll proceed with part B, which is empathy. No, all right. Okay. Uh... We will continue with the, the second part of our uh, training, uh, Empathy uh, Fundamental, and we're gonna watch some slides. We're gonna see some slides uh, presenting empathy um, in terms. Uh, we have some, I have, I can see that uh, Francesco uh, raised um, a hand. Yeah, sorry, uh, what was the question? What is it? Uh, no, I, I, it doesn't. I, I didn't come with a much question here. We're gonna have some questions later in the activity. Uh, but I was asking if someone wants to share something about ethics, or if he found the the part uh, interesting, or otherwise we can proceed and discuss later. Well, well um, I wrote on chat what I think ethic is. I would like to discuss with the other participants about loyalty. Mm -hmm. and and the relationship, um, I think it, it will it will lead to a long, long discussion. So maybe it's better for later. Although I yes, I should leave loyalty. I, I can see. Sorry, uh, sorry for interrupting you. I I just now checked the chat that some uh, of you guys posted. I didn't know it, but yes, we can do. I agree totally with you. It's a long discussion and ethics can be presented to anyone with a different terms and with um, different uh, fundamental, but um, there's no wrong uh, answer here. And there's no, I mean, uh, wrong and right uh, answer. So 
um, we we could discuss it later. Yeah, yeah. I, thank I you, thank you, me. Francesco. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, okay, what, what is empathy stands for our today uh, training? Uh, empathy constitutes uh, an essential requirement for positive online um, interaction and for realizing the possibilities that the digital uh, world affords. Uh, what do you think about empathy? Uh, if you want, you can write some uh, in the chat, guys, if you don't want to speak, uh, we can check it later. Um, I mean, is there a, a feeling that comes to your mind when you're thinking about empathy? For myself, uh, empathy, it's about feeling and understanding how others are feeling, which is very important. I mean, we're in the year of 2023 and we can see that empathy, it's not much, uh, we, can, we, we cannot see much empathy in our world. I mean, generally, not only in Greece or in Spain or for our friends. Um, Manuela, do you want to take, do you want to share something? I can see that you have raised your hand. Hello. Um, I believe that empathy is like to be sensitive for uh, others' matter, mm -hmm. for uh, other people's matters. Yes. Um, exactly. To try to understand them, mm -hmm. their point of view. The point of view, yes. Okay, Ma uh, Manuela, that's right. I, I, I feel the same. Uh, I can see that empathy is uh, the same in my mind. Uh, so, uh, empathy, it's uh, the awareness of the feelings of others in, in terms, in simple words. Uh, so what is about empathy? It's about um, imagine yourself in other shoes. It's about um, be a good listener and um, listen to anyone that wants to share something uh, for, uh, with you. Um, but in... The other side, you have to share also who you are. That is empathy also. Uh, and uh, how about validate others' feelings? Also, is that uh, in, comes in empathy. Um, and be genuinely curious about others, about others' thoughts or others' uh, problems that everyone, every individual has uh, his or her own uh, problems and they're uh, fighting for their life. So empathy comes that we have to be curious and genuinely curious about what a person, uh, he or she trying to stand in her life or in his life and how uh, he's making her money. We have to respect and um, be curious about if some if someone comes He's, let's say we have a friend, I have a friend that she's working in a supermarket, right? And she's like, she, we have the same age. We are, she's 30 years old and she has two children. Um, and she was like, I met her uh, the, week be, the week before and she was like, okay, I, I have a terrible day. Um, I was um, stocking, uh, put the stuff or the stock that we have all the day uh, in the aisles. So we don't have to be like, okay, how difficult is that to take um, a milk and put it in the refrigerator? But no, I mean, you have to be curious. She's waking up at 6 a.m. She leaving her children, for saying, and this it, it, it she has a rough day. So that's that is about uh, being um, show some curiosity about others' uh, life. Um, so empathy fundamental. So uh, this is some words and sentences that I have found in our literature review. Uh, interperson, uh, interpersonal empathy defined as uh, the capacity to recognize emotions of others experienced by, uh, by um, uh, another being, another human in this case. 
uh, is a key component of uh, one's coming of age. And that uh, is uh, meaning that uh, it's a key component when we being an adult. This is the difference about the children and adults. Um, that there's difficult to recognize children. Uh, it's difficult to recognize emotions uh, of their parents, of their friends, and etc. cetera. Uh, it brings a sense of tolerance within us as we gradually recognize the factors that connect us and strive towards unity. Um, and as we grow, uh, we interact uh, with a lot of people. Uh, each with their own tricks and personality, as we said. Um, our sense of empathy is what allows us to truly connect um, with them, with others. And we are able to share, um, to share in their emotions and experiences. Um, empathy helps us to, to make mature decisions. That's why it's more uh, capable to uh, an adult. Uh, as we recognize some emotions of other individuals, um, they help, it helps us to make mature decisions that would otherwise affect the feelings or emotional states uh, of those that uh, they are around us. And here is a, uh, a sentence uh, that uh, has been published in 1977, which empathy is the oxygen breathing life into the relationship between individual and other. This is right. Uh, this is a nice quote. All right, I'm checking when, meanwhile also the chat and I can see that some of you guys posted something. Uh, some image, images here also presenting empathy in keywords. What is empathy? We have three kinds of empathy. We have affective empathy, which is the ability to respond to other people's emotions appropriately. Uh, we have the cognitive empathy, which is the ability to understand someone's um, response to a situation. And there is also um, in the literature, as we, if we, if we will search, the ability, the somatic empathy, which stands with the ability to feel what uh, another person is feeling. Probably, uh, I mean, it's the same that you also guys uh, share in the chat. It's to understand the feelings of others. And uh, of course, it's important to mention here that uh, to be an active listener, it's also important uh, in, our day, in our daily life. Uh, let's see what are the personal skills uh, that we improve by being empathetic in our daily life. Uh, skills strengthened by empathy, a really nice image. It's, uh, this image presented in a workshop that, uh, uh, that took place in Holland um, in my this class, which is who is 14 years old. It's really nice that they are trying to present empathy to children, to teenagers in this way. Uh, so we can see that uh, we strength our uh, collaboration activity. Uh, we being more uh, creative. We are feeling safe when you're having a discussion with someone and there's, they, he share uh, his feelings and you accept the feelings and you're listening. Um, so you make him feeling safe and you're feeling same in your way. Uh, so there is the emotional connection that we established when we, as we being empathetic with others. And we know, we exercise in how to identify uh, needs of others. And of course, uh, we improve the skill of negotiation. This is uh, really interesting. I, I didn't know it before uh, make this research. All right, we can see that uh, empathy is existing in our life. Also, we have uh, in the in the other hand, virtual empathy, or you, maybe sometimes you can see it as an online empathy, which is uh, a term that we presented uh, today in our training. Uh, so the anonymity that comes with internet uh, use, the internet use that we have, can be uh, detrimental to this growth, 
I mean, we have this anonymity, anonymity helps uh, the virtual empathy uh, growing. Um, at first glance, I, I, I saw from a, a research of the World Wide Web uh, shows that uh, it might be uh, through to dram dramatically improve the collective development of empathy uh, during our networking. Uh, also, the internet is being used to create uh, communities in all over the nations and all over the world. Uh, but as a direct result, we can see that physical distance poses a small threat to communication. I mean, we have some factors here that coming in conflict. What about virtual uh, empathy? I mean, we create internet to, um, to connect nations, but what about the physical uh, distance that is growing? I mean, uh, and this is a really interesting uh, research that uh, two professors for the University of Tennessee uh, made, and they found that several of the interviews, they, have, uh, they had their research and they have also a, a questionnaires and um, they have interviews with some of the participants. And they saw that the, the interviews expressed fears um, of declining the, the human interaction due to the surge in online social interaction. And it's interesting also, in the other hand, that a participant also uh, asserts that a real hug or smile uh, will always transmit emotions that are impossible to feel through uh, a pathetic uh, a computer screen, which is right. Uh, I mean, you cannot feel what I'm feeling right now. If I am nervous or if I feel sleepy or, but I can, I, I don't know also about yourself. So it's important uh, also, we're gonna see later. Uh, it's important also when we have this, um, when you're speaking about empathy and when we are trying to be empathetic also in our work, it's really important when we have, um, okay, now we're, we are, so showing so we are in in a in a training, all right. But even if you're, I am in a, I am follow and um, uh, watching some uh, seminars and workshops. My in my work, I have everyday meetings. So uh, when I made this research, I can I saw that this participant from the from the research of the two uh, professions that I have mentioned, he say that. A real hug or a smile, or uh, it's the, transmit more emotions uh, instead of a computer screen. So I was trying this week and before and the days before. Uh, I was thinking that what about uh, someone that is speaking for, to me, and I have uh, the camera turn it turn off. So I was trying to change that because I don't like, okay, I wanna drink my coffee and I want to hear this seminar and this training, but I don't want to show myself. Yes, but it's, it's difficult. I mean, uh, if you're having an interaction session, I mean, in order to avoid this, let's say physical distance and reduce this um, uh, cringe uh, feeling, it's important to also um, appear and show yourself. Uh, Sorry guys, it's, it's not something that I want to make you to do it now, but it's something that I, I have on my mind. Um, also to, for, to proceed with this slide, it's um, also we can see that the personal connection uh, that this uh, anonymity comes within the internet uh, appear to be quite the flow in the system, which is growing and growing. Sorry, I'm just, there's people joining. Okay. Uh, we can see that there is a complex here. Based on the recent research, we can see that people can show empathy, uh, empathetic uh, responses to others online, but at the same time, empathy has been declined in young uh, people since technology-based communication has become uh, prevalent. Uh, displacement of face-to-face -face time by online activities will 
be expected uh, will be expected to negatively impact the empathic skills. Uh, more than 1,000 young adults uh, completed an anonymous uh, online questionnaire, which is the same thing that we saw in the previous uh, slide, but this is another uh, research. Um, asked about the, the participants uh, being asked about daily media usage and the real world empathy, the virtual empathy, um, the social support and demographic and some demographic information. And the results show that in, gen that in general, going online um, had very small negative impacts upon cognitive and affective real world empathy. And actually improved time spent in face-to-face -face communication. Uh, something, all, something else to mention here, which I know that probably also you guys, you, are, you know it, uh, video gaming reduced real world empathy in both females and males, but uh, did not reduce the face to, fa to face time. So it's the same that we can see uh, from the questionnaire that the 1000 young adults have answered that also that they, it, the internet, uh, it's being effective in empathy, in real world empathy, but it's improving uh this the time that we spend uh the, with the face to face communication i mean also due after covid we all want to uh proceed in one one uh, in one person uh meeting um but the empathy it's not being improved much as uh the need of uh face to face meetings so it's a really complex here that we have uh two values Real, uh, real world empathy and the face-to-face -face, uh, connection. And we can see that something is growing up, but something, it remains stable. Uh, here, guys, I have played some uh, articles that you could read, uh, or you can use it as a further reference for you. Um, because we can see that many uh, professionals and many pro uh, professors are producing um, articles about ethics and empathy. So here are some three articles that I found interesting from my side, uh, but as I, I know that the, um, the presentation is gonna be online for you, so maybe you can check it uh, later. So um, can we be, can you be more empathetic? Uh, I found a very interesting article for, from Avery Blanc, uh, who posted this article in the Forbes uh, website, uh, very recent, I can say, which, uh, because it was in 2021. And let's see how uh, she presents some ways that successful people retain their empathy in the virtual uh, working world. Okay, first way, it's use video to communicate, which is something that we mentioned before. I mean, you can better understand a person's emotion if you see the person. If you're working from home, for example, we, who, which um, uh, for myself, uh, I'm working uh, mostly remotely. So uh, if you're working from home or in a remote space, uh, leverage online video technology to you to see your colleagues. Uh, also, we have uh, listen, which is stated as the second way. Uh, and it's that also something that we mentioned before, because if you want to be empathetic, you have to um, key in on what the other person is saying, uh, both non-verbally and verbally. So you have to be uh, an accurate listener. Third is recognize your emotions. So what do we mean by, by that? Uh, when you are listening and recognizing uh, the other person's emotions, uh, recognize how you are feeling as well. Uh, being um, an observer in simple words. I mean, I can hear a bad situation that is describing by my friend, but how I'm feeling that time. So it's a way, it's a good way to measure how empathy empathetic you are. Uh, 
some other ways it's uh, be present and open-minded uh when you understand your emotions you come to the conversation with a sense of clarity and perspective and this can help us to have an open mind and avoid some uh, assumptions and identify um, commonalities um, ask questions also for the other person and yourself the best way to fully understand a situation is by asking questions in any in any way. I mean, if it's going to be in work in workspace or it's it's the university or it's a seminar or it's a personal um, relationship. Um, asking questions uh, demonstrate that you have listened and that uh, you care. So it's important not all, only for the presenter that they present you a training. It's important also that for, for your friend that you uh, went for a coffee and you listen uh, his problem. Um, also, we have uh, read. Read is a, a very good a way and provides you the ability to empathize, uh, can be developed through both real life and uh, real life situations in literature. Uh, when you read academic scholarships or nonfiction uh, articles, fiction articles, uh, you're learning about the science and about what we learned today, um, how the human brain works and about other people's lives and cultures. And you can strengthen your ability to understand other people and other um, cultures as well. And uh, lastly, uh, the, um, in this article, we can see that the last way, it's share, sharing something of yourself. You can show uh, empathy by opening and sharing something about yourself. It could be something uh, personal. It could be sharing how you're feeling, which help us to be more empathetic also. Okay, uh, now we have, uh, we spent 30 minutes around the presentations. Uh, I think that we are okay. Um, with the time, but uh, let's proceed with an interactive uh, session now. Uh, okay, if we were in a class, we would be split in teams of four or five, but we are not having any uh, one person meeting. So we're gonna uh, do it by individual. And uh, the only thing that you will use, it's a paper and a pen. Otherwise you can use your laptop. Um, but we, if we're having some uh, students here or people that are watching the, this training together, they can uh, cooperate and share uh, their thoughts. Okay. It's a, ah, this is a very interesting video about empathy, uh, which is also presented to, uh, to high school in Holland, in Sweden, uh, and in Norway, as uh, came up from my research. So let's watch it. I hope it's still okay with the sound. The importance of empathy. We all live in our own version of reality, a reality that is limited by our senses, our temperament, and our own experiences. It is the only reality we will ever truly know, but it is crucial to our personal development, our relationships, and to society itself that we make the effort to try and experience other people's realities as well. This is done through empathy. Simply stated, empathy is an active attempt to understand another person's perspective, their emotions, and in essence, their reality. We are social animals and our ability to communicate and understand each other's emotional states is key to maintaining our relationships. So it is little wonder that the ability to empathize is hardwired directly into our brains. One area that assists in this process is the right supermarginal gyrus, which helps us to distinguish our own emotional state from that of another person and plays a key role in our ability to observe and assess what other people are experiencing. Studies from Neuron Science Journal suggest that we have systems of mirror neurons in our brains that cause us to mimic the action of others. That is why when we see someone yawn, we will often yawn in reply. And when we observe someone experiencing joy or pain, we experience the same sensation to a certain extent. But these reactions are primarily... Oh, sorry guys. Primarily driven by subconscious reflexes. In order to be truly empathic, you have to actively think beyond yourself and your own concerns. You can develop this empathic skill by practicing some simple habits. 
be observant of others. We tend to spend the majority of our day dwelling on ourselves, caught up in our own daily routines and digital distractions. But taking the time to observe others around you is a good first step in developing your empathy. Watch and wonder. Try to focus on the person's state of being rather than categorizing or labeling them. Ask yourself, what kind of day are they having? How are they feeling? Challenge yourself to genuinely care about their well-being. Curiosity about others is the first step to expanding your empathy. Use active listening. During a conversation, especially a heated one, most people formulate the response before the other person even finishes their statement. This form of communication is more verbal combat than an exchange of ideas or opinions. Avoid this reflex by slowing down. Rather than rushing to reply, take a moment to consider the other person's statement. Ask follow-up questions to better understand what the speaker intended. Try to understand their emotional state and the deeper motivations behind their statement. What life experiences led them to their current world? Worldview. Remember, you don't need to share someone's opinion in order to understand it and acknowledge it. And listening will help inform and expand your own opinion. Open up. Learning more about other people's experiences is a key element to seeing the world through someone else's eyes. But it is also important to open up about your own feelings and experiences. Empathy is a two-way street that at best is built upon mutual understanding. Through a combination of uncovering the deeper motivations of someone else's position and expressing our own underlying concerns, we often discover a shared commonality, even with those who hold different beliefs than ours. Through the practice of keeping an open mind, empathy helps us challenge prejudice, find commonality, and expand our moral universe. Without it, we are apt to label people outside our circle as the other, the problem, or the enemy. These labels draw lines in the sand that prevent us from moving forward or growing. It cuts us off from the realization that the human experience is a shared experience. We have much more in common than we think and are really just seeing small variations of the same reality. Okay, that was really interesting. The last sentence that it says that other people have more similarities than we think. Another interesting video I found also in TikTok, uh, which is uh, really nice that people keep posting some uh, videos about uh, empathy in TikTok. Let's see. A really important skill to have in your relationship and in your everyday life is the ability to show empathy. In 30 seconds, let me show you why that is, and I'll also give you some examples to apply in your everyday life. Empathy adds depth to the love you feel for someone. This is because you see them for who they are, not what you imagine or hope they'll become. And being empathetic is the best way to help them move on with an issue. You see it all the time. Solutions on their own don't work until they feel validated first. For example, let's say they're upset because they didn't get a good grade on their last test. First, listen to what they're saying to you. What's their mood like and what's contributing to it? If you have a solid idea but aren't really sure, make sure to ask. It makes sense. You can't help them or offer them solutions unless you know exactly what it is they're going through. Finally, accept what they're saying and stay curious. When they're sharing with you, accept their truth. Feelings are just the brain communicating a need. It's how they genuinely feel, so you have no right to tell them they're feeling the wrong way. Empathy does not mean you get sad when they get sad. It simply means you can understand and accept why they're sad and when they're feeling that way. You got this. All right. I think that was the last video of our uh, of empathy. Yes. Uh, so one thing that we learned from today's lecture, we heard some things, if you remember, about uh, moral, personal values, um, ethics fundamental how, and how that stands based always, it's always guys in our personal values. I mean, we, we know we are, we are trying every day to be more empathetic also, but also for, speaking for myself, before making, before I made this uh, research, I didn't know that being empathetic, it's, um, okay, I've learned much enough now uh, in my first year of the positive psychology um, master, but we are in the stage of realizing and uh, observing uh, others' uh, feelings, which comes in the same way of being empathetic. Um, so I don't want to uh, keep you uh, more for in this part, 
So uh, let's start our first activity time. I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, you will, we will have some uh, interaction uh, session. Um, let's see. First, uh, please uh, write down your own personal values and prioritize them into top five. Um, if you're okay, if you're in a group, please discuss your answers, but we are not uh, in a group. So I'm also gonna have, you can take some seconds to write your personal values. You can share it also in our uh, chat if you want. This could be, um, speaking about personal values, guys, this could be anything that you are thinking. This can, could be gratitude, abundance. I mean, abundance, it's it's very important uh, value for me. So it's abundance, honesty, uh, freedom, even something that being uh, clean every day, it's, it's a value. So you can write, more than five, it's important to write that um, in a paper, which uh, it's an exercise that they are doing also in um, psychology, uh, in psychology students. Uh, you can grab this paper and write down that anything that we have in the activity, and then you, you're gonna have this paper and remember some uh, keys, remind yourself of some uh, keys. I'm giving just a, a minute if uh, someone wants need more time. Okay, I bet that you I write down mines. So I'm proceeding with number two, uh, which is uh, to think about three close people in your life. Uh, this could be siblings, friends, parents, spouses, um, anything that you want. And write down the values that you think are common to yours. I can see from my side that I have only two uh, same, two or three, sorry, three personal values, same common with my father, let's say, but with my brother, I have uh, plenty enough. So uh, also the age uh, matters. Okay, I bet you guys are finished. I'm moving on. Number three, uh, really nice question. How do you work out your personal values? 
uh, write down uh, four sentences. Uh, an example, as I said, uh, honesty is um, it's uh, one of the of my personal of my values. So uh, regarding honesty, let's say I'm trying to not uh, lie, something like that. I don't know, but anything you feel. Uh, so we don't have any wrong answer. It, it could be, of course, freedom. One Freedom is a personal value, someone. So uh, it's gonna be how I'm working out to being more free. I'm waking up at the morning, I'm trying to meditate, I'm trying to go for jogging. This reminds me uh, the sense of freedom in my life. So this, it's a good, uh, it's a good example. Okay, let's move on. This is the last question, I think. Um, and let's say your personal values are called to your purpose in life. The things you believe and um, value uh, are deeply likely to shape the aims uh, that give your life purpose so what you have in but what you have in mind for your what are the personal values for you um, seek to shape the aims that give your life purpose um, so let's go on number four uh, number four uh, question which it says like, go and reflect on whether this exercise confirms your sense of purpose. If you aren't sure your purpose, did this training give you any clues or insight into what your purpose might be? This is a, a more uh, sensitive question. I mean, uh, maybe this morning you didn't know exactly what, how the training is gonna be. Uh, so is, I mean, you write down five personal values. Is it something that it's, uh, one of your aims? I mean, you're writing, um, I have right freedom. Okay. Um, I have right freedom, happiness, honesty, um, power, uh, being clean. It's also a personal value. So do you, do you have this on do you have those terms and words in your mind when you're thinking about your goals about your life goals uh, because if you're thinking about honesty and happiness uh, the thing that will matter in your life it's going to be more uh, significant I, I mean your i am empathetic and my personal values and uh, it's honesty, happiness, and etc. So I want to be around people that has the same that they have the same values as me. Uh, what about if someone doesn't have the, the same values? I mean, okay, I don't want them in my life circle. So uh, did these values that you have defined earlier? Um, I mean change your purpose on confirm the sense of your purpose of life? Do you have it in mind how significant, how important 
it's the it's freedom i mean or it's just every day we are waking up we are going to uh, our school to our university to our work and uh we getting mad about um something that happens in work or something that matters in the university i didn't get a really good grade which it's not that something uh really matters okay of course it matters when if you fail an exam but what comes next i mean you're free i mean freedom it's very important so you're free and you're and you can get again that exam and you can read again and you can exam take this exam again and you can you're going to have a better result so being free it's very important i mean we have many people in prison and they didn't realize how important it's if they make something bad and they went if they stole or if they uh, made something else that we have many criminal um, uh, uh, background we have much criminal background in our country so uh they do not realize how uh what being free it, it's important um so just write down just a yes or no and we can uh discuss does anyone want to share something or i have i have a last scenario uh uh, later in the next slide, uh, which is the um, scenario that is uh, that is being held in anyone's uh, in in this exercise. I mean, in empathy exercises. So it's a very common scenario. Maybe if someone watched another training of empathy, maybe uh, they already saw it. But uh, it's good to have time to to see this scenario, but let me check. Uh, but guys, just take one, two minutes, I don't know, and share something or what about um, your personal values and how you work it in everyday life if someone wants to share something. Nice, I can see that, very nice. You have, uh, I have something, uh, a participant that, that posted in our chat uh honesty respect fairness clear thinking clear thinking love exactly this is very important Th this is very nice not very important i mean it's nice to define love All right. Thank you, Eva. I'm writing your, your I'm, I'm reading your, your comment here. This is really nice. This training helped me realize that writing down your values and how, um, uh, and how to work them, it helps me, uh, it will help me becoming a better person. Thanks. This is really nice. I don't know how I can put, uh, I've put hard in your, <laughs> I liked your comments because, sorry guys, I, I'm not much familiar with Zoom, so. I, I saw before Francesco, huh? so Francesco, please uh, be free and share your thought if you want to jump in the, in the conversation. Um, all right, guys, uh, I don't want to press you if you're not feeling comfort comfortable enough to speak today. I mean, it could be. That's nice. We are we are seeing uh, very different values in our chat. We can see uh, independence. Beauty, this could be beauty inside beauty and 
and not just the outside beauty. This is really nice. Um, honesty, something that a lot of people have in mind that, that make us uh, good individuals. And respect, we can see fairness. I forgot to mention fairness. And it's also something that it's like a stone in my mind. So that is, I mean, maybe you can try this uh, person that uh, exercise with the personal values and how you work out uh, on them. Uh, you can try it also at your home. Uh, in our, uh, in the master and in the, in a bachelor of a positive psychology, uh, which is not something that they they go uh, in much literature review and in much uh, scientific way. Positive psychology is something that comes uh, about uh, observe your feelings, write down your feelings, being empathetic, uh, uh, how to be a good listener, and etc. So it's uh, they have a lot of they have it's a book that it has a lot of exercise in, which is. Um, something like write down your personal values, write down your, your goals, your everyday goals. Not just, you know, I, I can hear some of my, for, of my friends. Uh, I have my friends in Cyprus and they're saying, okay, this is uh, 2023 20, years has been started. So uh, do you want to come at my place um, having some drinks and then we can write down our goals? And I was telling to her like, okay, we can do this every week. I mean, every week could something happen. So you can write your goals and you can define your personal values in every week, not just in the beginning of the year. Okay, thank you, Francesco. You also write your comment here. Very nice. I mean, respect for the earth, which without earth, I don't know how we would live. Very important and a good point. Okay, thank you, Francesco, for your comment. I don't know if you're still uh, here, but have a great day. Bye-bye. You can watch also the, the later session after because I'm recording the session, so it will be provided to you. Uh, all right, guys, let's, let's proceed at, because it's, uh, we're running uh, time. Um, let's proceed uh, with a scenario. Uh, do you think that we can make it? Mm, I think yes, it's 12, 12, 20, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't want to read it guys for you because it's gonna be a waste of time. Uh, take uh, a minute to read the scenario. It's a scenario uh, activity that, uh, as I said before, it's being shared to all of the to most of the participants that they have watched in their life an empathy training. So it's a good example of our life. It's uh, testing most ethics and empathy online. And please, for our male students and for our male. Participants consider it as an example with the male names. Sorry, but the example it's written in female names, but it's something that definitely you can change and imagine something of you and your friend. Or, I mean, something for Costas and uh, John. Um, this scenario comes out with four questions. How would you feel if you were Jennifer uh, or Costas, let's say? How would you do to resolve the situation? Uh, who would be affected by what you will do? And does this change uh, how you felt 
about this story when you heard it from Maria's point of view, the other girl, which is in the story, or let's say from John's point of view. I've placed two ma uh, male names in this scenario, Costas and John, to be more easier for you if we have, I think we have some male participants. Okay, please guys take uh, two minutes. And after I want to hear at least some, some of your thoughts. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, did, does anyone want to share something? I will read some we have in our chat from our participants. Okay, I like that. I mean, I like because I did this. I will do the same. I will not share our photos. I try. Uh, for me, I try to find new photos. Clear enough. Um. Sorry, Eva, I'm gonna read, I'm, I'm reading your comment here. Clear enough, thank you, Eva, that's nice. Also, Hermione uh, posted something in our chat. Clear enough. She would feel kind of annoyed of this situation if if she was Jennifer. That's nice, guys. Uh, let me tell you about myself. Uh, I will, if I would uh, be Jennifer, I would also feel. Okay, I know it also agreed with Hermione. Um, and uh, how do how would I resolve this the situation? Okay, maybe because I also agree with Eva what she said uh, in our in our chat. Um, I will try to not try. I mean, it's a, in my mind. I don't know if it's important for you guys. If it's important, it's totally fine. Um, because it's the way that you're thinking for my uh, for my way, and because I am the trainee, and I should also uh, share my thoughts. Um, 
maybe uh, I will I will try to um, explain to my friend because she's my friend because of a choice of my choice and I I love her and I um, I agree with her values and and sh and her perspective of life so maybe I will try to to explain to her is this a real uh, problem that we have to discuss it further but we, of course if she wants to discuss it further uh, maybe I, I would like, and this is comes coming with the first question. I would like to hear why she feels like that. Why is she feeling like this photo would be burst from here for her? Um, I will totally listen to her opinion and her side and um, trying to understand why. And then uh, maybe I will explain to her how I'm thinking of it. And maybe this could change the whole situation and how she will feel it. Uh, all right, guys, if no one wants to share something else, we could proceed as we have more, th uh, more 30 minutes. Um, and we're supposed to have a break now, but we are almost 15 minutes behind. So I don't know. Do you want guys to make a five minutes break or do you want me to continue with the, with the session? Are you feeling uh, all right? All right, thank you guys. Uh, I will continue. Thanks, thanks also, Sophia. Um, and if uh, maybe we're gonna finish five minutes earlier. Let's see. Thank you. Uh, okay, moving on in part C which is another important session, it's health and well-being. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to. Okay. Um, within our today's training, health and well-being relate to the fact that digital citizens inhabit both virtual uh, and in real spaces. Uh, for this reason, the basic skills of digital competence alone are not sufficient. Uh, individuals also require a set of attitudes, skills, values, and knowledge that uh, render them more aware of issues related to health and well-being. Um, I'm also reading the last sentence here. In a digitally rich world, health and well-being imply being aware of challenges and opportunities that can affect wellness, including but not limited to an online addiction, ergonomics and posture and excessive use of digital and mobile devices. Uh, what do you think when you hear about health and well-being? You can also write in chat as we are proceeding with the slides here. Um, let's see. Health and well-being for all. So we can see that we have uh, presented here six, uh, five values. Uh, what is health and well-being? Uh, it's about nutrition. It's about physical activity. Uh, it's about sleep. It's about financial well-being. Um, it's about being connected, and also it's it's our mental health. Uh, and we're gonna see later on how this comes out uh, in in terms. Okay, uh, I'm I'm sure that we all. Uh, know why health is important for our life. Uh, and uh, we know how uh, terms of physical health uh, and mental health are connecting in a way. So physical health problems significantly increase our risk of developing mental health problems and vice versa. So it's a, 
it's a circle. It's a vice versa situation. If you're not good enough in physical health, which means I'm healthy, um, uh, my uh, my blood uh, prices are, are good enough. I'm not having any heart uh, problem, let's say, um, etc. If uh, you're not good enough in physical health, it's increasing our risk to developing uh, mental health problems, how, how we feel mentally. And this is vice versa, as we said. Um, nearly one in three people with a long-term physical health condition also has a mental health problem, uh, most often depression or anxiety. Um, I will speak for my mom. My mother, she has um, a, a disease, uh, which is uh, psoriasis. I know that maybe you can hear about that. Uh, it's not that something that we're embarrassing for that because she she's uh, fighting with psoriasis about right uh, around 30 years now. So if someone has a psoriasis and every day seeing herself like, uh, I have something on my face and she has very uh, dry and bubbles in her hands. So this could, uh, could cause her um, an, an, an anxiety. She, she's being anxious every day in her life because she's seeing her hands and she's seeing uh, that this is spreading all around her, uh, her body. So what I can do, it's not something that I can do. I have to take medicines for her life. So the, imagine this in a more, in a most, um, in a most serious disease in, in about, no, also psoriasis is a serious, but imagine something, someone that is fighting for cancer, uh, I guess cancer for years. This caused him uh, a depression and anxiety, of course. Okay, and we can see also uh, five pillars of health here, which is sleep, uh, nutrition, exercises, mind and emotions, as we said, and uh, relationship and community, which stands also with the five pillars here. Most images, when you Google health and well-being, it's uh, most uh, common. Uh, proceeding with the second uh, slide, we can see that health in terms, what is health in terms? Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Uh, which uh, we can see that this definition of health uh, came out for the World Health Organization, I think, yes, in 1948. The definition was uh, ratified during the first World Health Assembly and has not been modified since 1948. But uh, we have one uh, health term for, since 1948. Okay, moving in. Uh, well, uh, well being terms. Sorry, I have a. Okay, I'm gonna read that. Um, well being in terms is the state of being happy, healthy, or prosperous. I like, I like very much this word. I mean, when I'm, when I'm wishing someone, uh, have a happy new year, I'm wishing that, let's say, have a prosperous year. Okay, let's see how we define well being. Uh, well-being uh, is the highest possible quality of life in its full breadth of expression focused on, but not necessarily exclusive to good living standards, robust health, uh, sustainable environment, uh, vital communities, um, ed educated populace, balance, time use, high levels of uh, democratic participation, and access to leisure, uh, leisure and culture. And of course, uh, one a recently interesting statement I found, it's that, sorry, let's see. Yeah, uh, it's uh, very recent, as I said, it's posted on uh, February 2023, that being kind also triggers the release of uh, serotonin in the brain, which improves mood and promotes feelings of well-being. I mean, if you're 
it's a sentence here that uh, uh, a professor uh, realized that uh, I think uh, Lee Crow is a professor uh, who posted this and analyzed his research on uh, ABC News, and she uh, he excuse me he uh, presents that, that that being kind in your life it's uh, um, triggers your ser uh, serotonin hormone in your brain, uh, which automatically improves your mood and uh, promotes your feelings of uh, well-being. This is really interesting. Uh, let's see, uh, within our today mentioned, uh, we, within our today uh, training, we mentioned that about also health and well-being digital that uh, health and well-being is related to the fact that digital citizens inhabit both virtual and uh, real spaces. Uh, so let, let's see what comes um, around uh, the terms, the, the general terms. We can see that uh, digital health and wellness, it's one of the nine branches of digital citizenship. And it covers ergonomics and mental and physical well-being posture and important body parts like the eyes when using the internet. It also emphasizes the risk of hackers and the other danger, dangers on websites. And let's see another uh, interesting image here. It's how we define the digital well-being and we could define it uh, through these four factors, uh, which one is the first is the mental well-being, second is the emotional well-being, uh, physical well-being, and social well-being, which comes in the social well-being. We can see that uh, comes with creating and maintaining relationships, uh, participating appropriately, and have a sense of belonging. And also regarding the mental well-being, we can see that we have uh, it's uh, defining how uh, we manage our mental illness, uh, how we have, uh, how we create a positive mental health, and uh, in generally managing our mental uh, disorder, disorder. So it's pretty the same uh, how is digital uh, well-being uh, presented and how um, the no, the non-digital well-being comes comes with a, again four or five similar factors. Okay, and I have another interesting video now, uh, which is interesting because it's created by the Barcelona Institutions of Health, Institution of Health, uh, and it's uh, created uh, during the, um, the COVID uh, 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 situation that we had. So it's pretty recent. Uh, I have also the link uh, in the chat i mean it will be presented in your uh, after once the pre the presentation will be released for you our health and well-being are influenced by the settings in which we live by 2030 two-thirds of humanity will live in urban areas Cities provide an excellent opportunity for local governments to protect and promote health at many levels. 23% of deaths are caused by environmental factors. In fact, more than 90% of the world population is exposed to air quality levels that do not meet the recommendations of the World Health Organization. Some 235 million people currently suffer from asthma. It is the most common non-communicable disease among children, and urbanization is associated with an increase in asthma. 39% of adults are overweight. Obesity is one of the biggest health problems worldwide, and living in urban areas contributes to sedentary lifestyles. Health is not only about medical and clinical services such as hospitals, it is about including health directives in all policies. Cities can be designed to provide well-being and care. Thus, many local governments are already taking actions to bring about health benefits by raising awareness in communities for prevention and to promote healthy lifestyles, improving services including basic health services, waste management, hygiene in food chains, and water and sanitation.
putting people at the center of urban and transport planning, responding to the needs of all citizens, promoting connectivity in diverse neighborhoods, and improving the quality and safety of public spaces to favor mental health, physical activity, and social cohesion, improving road safety and managing traffic to reduce injuries and casualties, protecting common goods such as soil, water, air, and the natural environment in an integrated way across sectors. The Sustainable Development Agenda, including SDG 3, is about ensuring healthy living, fostering well-being for all people at all ages, and promoting indicators to monitor progress. This can only be achieved through local action. All right. I found this video um, really nice because it shows us uh, how important it's to raise awareness to people, to citizens, and uh, how we uh, amplify um, and create health in all uh, the policies and how uh, important in also to provide uh, sustainability to people, which it's uh, combined uh, a good environmental and um, uh, rehydration and uh, how all the aspects of being sustainable uh, citizen help us to being also to feeling uh, well-being also because if you are living in a country that is uh, um, uh, reforms in, sus in sustainability policies and uh, ways, it's, you also feel nice. I mean, so this is improving your uh, wellness. Okay, I think I have another video. Uh, I hope video it's better for you guys because I'm not matching the theory. Uh, I mean, I'm not thinking that theory, uh, a two hours session with theory will uh, be productive enough to, to you. So um, I try to find some uh, small videos which define digital wellness. This is defines the digital wellness. So I think it's, it's gonna be uh, more funny for you and more interesting. What is digital wellness? Digital wellness, also known as digital well-being, is technology's ideal state where it works in harmony with users' physical and mental health. It's a key ingredient for a positive employee experience. Why is digital wellness important? With all the incredible benefits we gain from technology, the drawbacks of an always-on society are equally plentiful. 24-7 connectivity is, ironically, making us less connected to what's actually important. The accelerated shift towards a remote workforce has exacerbated our use of technology. With less structured boundaries, employees are becoming increasingly digitally dependent resulting in productivity distractions and perpetual connectivity and decision fatigue. 67% of Quartz research respondents said they felt they had to be always on, while a Gallup poll showed <laughs> two-thirds of workers have experienced burnout. In order to ensure employees are happy, healthy, and productive, it is vital that companies enable digital wellness. To enable digital wellness, Employers should implement policies that encourage a healthy work-life integration and carefully select technology that will add value to the employee and simplify workflows. Key attributes technology should offer employees are 1. Productivity. Tech should set controls for scheduling, blocking times, and silencing notifications. 2. Mobility. Tech should enable better flexibility for employees to work securely when and where they need to on personal devices. Three. Automation. Tech should automate administrative tasks and optimize workflow. Okay, that was, I think, our last video. And we have, let's see, the time we have like 12 minutes uh, in time. And this is uh, the last uh, activity time. Uh, that should be also another interactive uh, session for us, uh, which is um, focusing in what we saw in well-being and health. Okay, firstly, we need to declare to declare whether our workspace 
this, okay, guys, this could be a university also, is developing a wellness program. This is a simple answer, like yes or no. I can say for my, for my workspace, for example. All right. How would you promote digital wellness in, in a workplace? I mean, we, we saw that video, how uh, we should um, improve and uh, uh, enable digital wellness in a company, in a workspace. Uh, and in the era of remote work, Technology is both uh, a blessing and, and distraction also. Uh, we can say that programs such as uh, Zoom platforms, Slack, uh, Teams, Microsoft, um, help to keep uh, a digital workforce connected, which is totally fine and very nice. Uh, but in the other, in the other hand, they, they can also lead to they can also lead an employee uh, attention being pulled in many directions at once. And here comes the question that I, I placed here. Uh, what will you do to promote the digital wellness? Uh, take some uh, minutes, take two minutes and write down some thoughts that you have. If you, if you were a manager or if you were um, an assistant professor, in a university, how will you promote digital wellness to students or uh, also to uh, to colleagues, to to the people, to the individuals that are working in a workplace? You can take two minutes, guys, to write down something of your thoughts. Um, okay, guys, I don't want to keep you more and keep uh, spend your uh, time. I know that you, everyone has plans to do for today. Uh, let's see if uh, no one wants to speak. I can see that Eva wrote something in, in chat. Um, for my side, in a workplace, this could be my company, my recent company now, now or could be a future company. Um, for my side, in order to, um, in the terms of uh, mobility and automation, um, I will create uh, an application, let's say. Um, it's something that I didn't have it at all in the in my 10 years work experience and this is something that because I, i'm realizing how uh, important and 
and significant matter it's uh, digital wellness also for my work because I'm working remotely. So I don't want to uh, sit in a chair for like 10 hours and 12 hours and eight or eight hours uh, or even five hours. I don't want to be, uh, you're not product productive enough if you're sitting in a chair. And now that's why I thought that break it's so important in this two hour session. It's important to have at least five minutes break and stand up from, from the chair. Uh, but of course, it's that's why I asked you. But OK, uh, anyhow, to close uh, my answer, to finalize my answer, it's that I will create uh, an application uh, for a, man a management application that uh, colleagues will, uh, employees will have this application in their phones because I changed to 23 now, we have all smartphones. So uh, I will create an application. I will spend money. I mean, if, if I would be a leader or a manager and uh, I will create an application which will um, sending some uh, automotive, of course, reminders that comes with the um, automation term that we saw in the video. And let's say uh, we'll, uh, send some self-care reminders. Uh, let's say, um, uh, please uh, stand up or uh, please drink water or please, um, um, I don't know, uh, you could open your camera in this, uh, in the next meeting. You have meeting in, in two hours. Um, are you well prepared? Something like that. It will, it will be helpful for the employees, I think so. And uh, also, of course, uh, I will I will establish this um, old way of uh, enable the digital awareness. I mean, I will provide my in my employees um, um, health and well-being uh, courses. There are plenty enough. Uh, there are in Udemy. You can find some. You can find also some in Coursera. So uh, it's really nice to have this. Um, uh chance and pro give your employees this uh um let's say ability to have to be to have this uh reference for uh their own use um so this is for my this is from my side as an answer uh what else do you have uh, yes i'm uh having here some also three articles that uh, for, you can use it guides for personal reference if you want. Um, okay, I will close with I will close this training with two videos I found from TikTok, which I found it uh, much interesting. And it's not much enough. We have three minutes more. I think it's uh, around one, not even one minute. So let's. Your mental health and your well-being is the most important thing in the world. Nobody else is going to maintain that for you because everybody else is focused on their own. If you want to spend as long on this planet as humanly possible, you need to create a good environment for yourself. And that involves you taking a look around at the things that you're doing with your life and the people that you're hanging around with. Because if you're not where you want to be, it will be because of one of those two things. I definitely, I need much more from the guy that he presented this video. And uh, last but not least, this a very nice video I saw in TikTok. Um, I, I already ordered one of the books, uh, the one I already read it, but uh, this is also a reference for you guys if you want Five to. Five books to help improve your health and well-being. Mindset by Carol Dweck. Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. 10% Happier by Dan Harris. The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying by Marie Kondo. Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. How many of these have you read? All right. And uh, this is all, guys, for today. And uh, I'm wrapping the, today's training. I hope you find this training interesting enough and um, helpful for you.
uh, is there someone that, as we closing this meeting, uh, wants to share something or um, wants to open their cameras for say goodbye or something else? I don't know. From I can see that also. I didn't. I forgot to mention Eva's uh, comment. So sorry, uh, Dimitra. Uh, mentioned that she has also psoriasis for 11 years now. I um, totally understand you because I'm seeing my mother for 30 years now. It started with eczema and it's now proceed with, uh, uh, she had the psoriasis now. So I'm totally get you. And I hope this meet training, um, it will be helpful for you and you will try to um, improve also your, how your mental health, because it's too important. And I hope and I hope to you very best of luck with uh, uh, with psoriasis. I'm I'm hoping that in the next years we will find a more um, uh, effective uh, solution for psoriasis. Okay, guys, uh, this is my email. You can please save it if you want to uh, send me a question or if you want to get. Um, uh, interact with me or discuss further. I am in your uh, disposal. Um, let's see. I have to make stop share, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed enough. Uh, have a great day. And uh, that's all from my side. I don't know if uh, Marilena wants to say something before we close. Well, uh, thank you very much, Anna Maria, first of all. I was here for the whole session. Um, thank you, Marilena. It's too bad I couldn't do the activities though. So guys, we thank you very much for being here, for interacting with, uh, with Anna Maria. <laughs> Um, as you know, everything will be uploaded. I know I have fallen a little bit behind on that, but everything will be uploaded on Google Classroom. Uh, I hope that everyone has access. I know that you have to have a Google account for that. In any case, you can find both me and Ana Maria on Slack. Um, or you can send me an email and I will send to you anything that you want, the presentations, the um, extra links or anything else that the trainer wants to share. So yeah, in any case, we will be in touch. Thank you very much. And uh, next Thursday, the, through the trainings, as you know, uh, continue. Uh, by FIBGAR with the, the environmental uh, citizenship. And I know that they have created um, some really interesting content for you. So hope you enjoy. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you very much, Marilena. Thank you all for being here. Bye-bye.